Looking to take your financial knowledge to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to Ask Ralph. Offering accounting, technical, and financial advice. Whether you're looking to save taxes or improve your business, he's got you covered. Here's your host of Ask Ralph, Ralph Eastup Jr. Hello and welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. I am really happy that you joined us today. My name is Ralph Estep Jr. I'm an accountant from Middletown, Delaware, and I do this show every week, and we do a podcast. It's called Ask Ralph, so I encourage you to check it out and go to my website at askralph.com. Now, we usually talk about business and we talk about tax. Well, today we're going to talk about something that's a lot more practical, and that's five ways to stop wasting time at work. Now, I'm an employer, so I've got two people that work for me. But you know what? Sometimes even as the employer, we're looking for ways to stop. Seems like we're not getting anywhere. You know, our productivity is declining. It could be because we're wasting time rather than focusing on key tasks at hand. So how do you go about fixing that? And I got some great ideas here. There's five ways to stop wasting time at work. So number one, ring the bell. Number one, lock yourself in quiet spaces. Listen, it's bluntly true. It's easy to get distracted at the office when you're surrounded by chatty colleagues and side conversations that are far more interesting than the work you're supposed to be doing. But here's the thing. If you let yourself get sucked into those discussions, you're going to fall behind and incur your boss's wrath as a result. And let's just say you don't even have a boss. Let's say you work for yourself. If you get distracted, you know, if you can't tell your, tear yourself away from the folks around you long enough to stop wasting time, remove the temptation by regularly setting up Shop in a quieter spot in your office. You know, maybe close your door. You might even ask your manager for permission to use his or her office if your boss doesn't use it all that much. You know, that may be a good idea or a conference room maybe you can work in. So that's number one. Lock yourself in quiet spaces. Get away from those distractions. That could be something as simple as like I'm I'm daydreaming looking out the window. Put a blind up. Close the shades. I don't people have curtains. Close the curtains. What's number two? Number two is turn off your cell phone. See, here's the thing about this. A quick text message here and there during the workday might seem innocent enough, but a brief back and forth can quickly turn into a full-fledged conversation. It's not just that conversation. It takes you off a point. It takes you off of the task at hand. Then when you come back to it, you know, maybe you're going to have to remember where you were. I'll take a great example. I used to have a dual monitor set up in my office, and I thought this was the height of efficiency because I had every single program that I work with open at the same time. And I said, you know what? This is fantastic. I am multitasking. I am doing all kinds of fantastic things. I'm checking email. I'm checking text. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at that. I'm checking my counter all the same. Guess what? It doesn't work. You can say you're multitasking, but you are really not being efficient. One of the big things about this is turn off your cell phone. So number three, organize your calendar. Here's a key one. It's easy to inadvertently waste time when you don't have a preset schedule outlining your days at work. You know, create a daily calendar with blocks of time for various tasks. Here's a great example. If you give yourself from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. to write up your weekly data analysis report, you'll be less likely to waste time during that period knowing that you only have an hour allocated to do this. I do this in my own life, in my own accounting practice. But I generally set aside certain times of the day when I'm going to review email respond to email. You know, maybe I'm going to put aside certain times where I need to work on projects where my door is closed. I'm not answering the phone. I'm not listening for people to come in. You know, you have to really make yourself efficient by scheduling those times. And, you know, and if you work in a, you know, in an area where let's say it's a cubicle thing, you know, where, you know, there's always people around. Well, obviously you might want to think about, you know, how do I carve out time to do those, you know, tasks that I really need to concentrate on. You know, maybe that's the thing you do when you first get in in the morning when people are more quiet. It just depends on the dynamics of your workplace. But you have to think about this in terms of strategy. You know, what is the best strategy to do this? You know, I have a lot of people, and this is a personal pet peeve, that don't respond to emails. You know, I'm a believer if somebody sends me some sort of electronic communication, then I need to get back to them. Even if it's as simple as saying, you know what, I got your email, I will get an answer to you by a certain time. But you got to set aside that time because it's great to say that, oh, you know, hey, Kurt, I'm going to get back to you by a certain time. But if you don't set aside the time to do it, you're just breaking down communication and you're, you're not setting, you're not delivering on some expectations. 
So what's number four? Now, we've already talked about the top three. We're going to lock yourself in quiet spaces, turn off your cell phone, and organize your calendar. And number four is organize your space. This drives me crazy. I used to work for a law firm. I never understood how some lawyers could be so unorganized in their office. I, you know, when I first started working for a law firm, I didn't understand why we had to have so many conference rooms. Then I went into a couple of lawyers' offices and I got it. And I'm not just throwing lawyers under the bus. Accountants are bad for this too. I've been in accounting offices where it looks like a minefield of papers on the floor. It's kind of an insider joke with accountants. You know, we put stacks of papers or stacks of files on the floor, but it's not efficient. If your desk is full of clutter, carve out some time to get it organized. And this is simple, folks. You know, shred papers you don't need. File essential documents in some kind of order and make your supplies more accessible. It's a real simple process here. You know, if you spend less time navigating the disaster zone, that it, the, 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 bleh, 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 bleh. well, I'll tell you what, sometimes I trip over my words. But, you know, as I get older, I think that's just part of life. But anyway, what I was saying is the less time you spend navigating the disaster zone that is your workspace, the more time you'll free up to actually do your job. It's not rocket science, folks. Put things where they belong. And make sure you're organized. When I see a person's desk that's unorganized, I see a person that's inefficient. You know, and it it might not be, you know, it doesn't need to be pristine and everything have its exact place. But if you've got this and that, you know, it's distracting even to the eyes. So we've talked about the top four. What are they again? Number one, lock yourself in quiet spaces. Number two, turn off your cell phone. Number three, organize your calendar. Number four, organize your space. Well, here is the most important one in my view, and that is build-in breaks. Look, sometimes we waste time at work by talking to colleagues, checking text messages, or surfing the internet because our minds need a break from the constant grind. It's just a fact. I mean, it's just a fact. If that sounds like you, then you're better off scheduling some breaks during the day, but powering through otherwise. Here's a great example. You might carve out 20 minutes in the morning or afternoon to chat with coworkers or look at your favorite websites. Now, your employer might not be happy about this, but look. If you're working at peak efficiency and you need to take 15 or 20 minutes, I, I know when I've worked at certain offices and I would do that in the afternoon, you know, sometimes after lunch, you get sort of that, that mid afternoon, like that three o'clock, like I'm going to fall asleep at my desk feeling. And what I would do is just, that would be my time to go out for a walk. And it, it really served two purposes. You know, it, it served a purpose of getting me up off of my desk, which, you know, away from my desk, which is great. Gave me a break. And it also was an opportunity to do some team building with other people in the organization. And the thing that's cool about this is if you do this and you clean up your act, you may become the shining star in your office and people are going to want to emulate what you're doing. And let me tell you right now, bosses love that. And if you work for yourself, all of these tips are going to make you more efficient and allow you to get more work done in a shorter amount of time. So put these things to work, my friends. You've been listening to Ask Ralph, brought to you by Sazio Accounting Plus. Please subscribe to and write our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. Our podcast is produced by Carolyn Peters. Thank you for listening and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Ask Ralph Media. You can also hear me each week on 1450 WILM and on 1410 WDOV in Delaware and on the iHeartRadio app. Submit your questions or ideas for future shows by sending an email to Ask Ralph at AskRalph.com. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Sagio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.